this time I'll call the June 8th, 2017 meeting to order for the County Commission of Dixon County. Would you please stand and join in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have an agenda for approval, and there is one addition, which is to review and approve the interlocal agreement with the Flint Hills Public Transit. And with that uh, added item, I'll move that we approve the amended, amended agenda. Second. We have the motion and the second for approval of the agenda with the addition. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The consent agenda includes the minutes of May 25th work session and the regular meeting. It also includes the fund expenditures of $117,990.45. Wire payments for the following. Kansas Department of Health and Environment, $139,535.07. Uh, Capers, $38,623.31. And utilities, $7,813.57. I move we approve the consent agenda. Second. We have the motion and second to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? Otherwise, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we'll go to Commissioner Comments and start with Craig. Uh, none. Okay. Laverne. Uh, of course, last Thursday uh, we had our County Commissions Association uh, conference, uh, and so we I felt like we had some good presentations at that meeting. I guess one that uh, kind of sticks in my mind was they had a presenter that that uh, when they had the Heston shooting at, at the uh, plant down there that all the things that that entailed that they wasn't quite prepared for I guess you could say and uh, and it was a lot of media that showed up and just all the things that they were trying to do an investigation and all the people that they really hadn't planned on a designated place to put all the media and, and it was just uh, like I say I thought it was very interesting uh, all the things that they had uh, had experienced with that uh, also I should comment that uh, this next week uh, Maybe towards the end of the week, I think <clears throat> harvest wheat harvest looks like it's progressing a little quicker this year, and we're supposed to have some hot days. So it depends on the weather, but people might be aware that uh, there will be combines and trucks and things out on the road when harvest starts. That it's uh, time to try to uh, be safe and and. Uh, and, and watch for the, these activities that are going to be uh, starting uh, soon in, in wheat harvest get started. Uh, I guess, Lynn, I'll let you report on our work session today. Okay. Um, yes, in the work session this morning, we started at 8 o'clock and uh, we did review the budget. Uh, we had Leah Hearn in here as well as the Sheriff's Department and then our Finance Director Janelle uh, Dockendorf was in here and um, we just generally went over some preliminary numbers and we're working on the budget um, that we'll, we'll be adopting uh, eventually here in about a month after the publication has taken place, but we're looking at every department and some of the various items, uh, general fund also. Um, we did, as mentioned, we had the, uh, the convention over at Junction City, 
and so uh, there were quite a few county commissioners uh, there at the meeting uh, from across the state um, and uh, it's always good to get some of the updated information um, we're we're still kind of considering what's taking place down at the state legislature and the impact that that's going to uh, have overall uh, next Monday there's a farm tour and I do plan to attend that uh, Craig are you going to be in attendance yes that also yeah we haven't got any more information about it or you, did you get something I haven't okay. other than it starts what at one o'clock right and at hope at, at hope yeah that's where we that's our meeting place yeah I'm not sure yeah I don't know. I'll put my email here okay. um, but there was supposed to be more information coming so. but, but then it concludes I guess at, uh, at, that evening um, at the windmill Inn. Yeah. So, okay. Well, um, if I get information, I'll try to yeah. give it to Brad well, or, yeah. Um, yeah. or same yeah. with you, Craig, and then right. probably you won't be in attendance. I won't be. Uh, I hope to be in harvest. Hopefully in the field. Okay. Okay. And, you know, just to, um, and I'm glad you brought that up about the, you know, be considered what's going on in the county because there are a lot of equipment out there and a lot of things going on and and uh, you know still agriculture I mean that's a, that's a big big part of the economy uh, as well as history of Dixon County so um, we'll see how things go there well Move on to presentation of petitions, proclamations. There are not any proclamations, but we will take public comments um, from anyone um, on any issue that is not on the agenda. Um, and also, I want to recognize at this time we have some guests that are with us today. And if you'd please go ahead and kind of state your name, and, and you can stand while you do this, and then um, we'll get both. We have a couple of students here. Uh, just tell us kind of your purpose here today and what you hope to gather and uh, and tell us what your impressions are of county government and what you hope to learn today so we'll go ahead and have ladies first get you off the hook just a little bit <laughs> I'm Bailey Dawkins I'm 17 years old and I am here at completing my final project for my government class to graduate early next year um, I find that county um, County government is very important because it's very close to home and it very directly affects us. And I hope to just gain a greater understanding of how it works and what goes on within our county. Okay. Thank you. I'm Darren Whalen. I'm 18 years old and I'm just finishing up another government class to graduate. And this is my first commission meeting and I'm hoping to figure out I don't really have that much knowledge of like city government and I f feel like knowing a lot more about what goes on will give me just a better understanding of what happens behind the scenes in our town. And of course every, you know, Dixon County is made up of numerous cities mm -hmm. and, and so the city activities actually take place at the city building and the city commission is in charge of city issues and where the county is a little bit of a larger perspective because we have to consider the entire county and uh, I don't maybe some of the other commissioners have comments or questions I'll leave the door open there well what are you expecting to I, you see, you're right off the wrong right off the back there because this is a county, county. yeah, it's not city uh, commission meeting. So I'm gonna have to nail you on that there. You got that wrong. What What do you think the county does? She already knows. I gave her the answers. In <laughs> <laughs> we had some discussion before you got here. Yeah, but no. what's, what's the main purpose of the county? Or one of the main purposes? I'd assume something along like property. That's all. Well collect property taxes property tax, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but public safety is one of the ones and there are regulations <laughs> on what people can do with their properties and, right. and sometimes the county does get involved with that um, not in in legislating what you can do but we've already you know, we 
we have guidelines that have come down from the legislature that um, so sometimes we're involved with the enforcement or making sure that it's everything's done properly. Uh, One of the things that very few people know that everybody that is in prison goes through a county jail, so it don't make any difference where you're at. There's you don't go to a city jail, you go to a county jail. Uh, how many ambulances do you think we have on full time? Both of you. Don't hop up once. In, in Dixon yeah. County. Yeah. Less than five. Less than five? Probably like four, three. Three, there you go. <laughs> yeah, full time. There are full time ambulance owners. One at Harrington and two stationed here in Abilene. And kind of the purpose of that is, I mean, you can, in theory, get more than one call at one time, but if something happens on interstate and at the same time, say, close to Harrington or Hope or Chapman, the whole county still needs to be covered in a way that's reasonable. Um, and, and sometimes there is some support that takes place with adjoining counties, because especially on interstate, sometimes it's very close to the county line or in, actually involves both counties. Um, Ms. Dawkins, since you were given some answers in advance, would you want to expand a little bit your impression of what the county does? Because we didn't have a discussion on that. My impression of what the county does is um, mainly overseeing departments within the county and public safety issues with the police and fire and um, ambulance as well as um, boundaries within the county and property taxes and any issues that would be in that um, are part of that. Yeah, and one of the things that we had discussed before is, um, you know, this is one of the places you can come to get your driver's license and have the driver's license test, uh, have your tag for your car, um, pay your property tax. Um, you know, sometimes you'll read in the paper where someone has an expired tag on their car. Well, it's, it's the responsibility of individuals to come in when, and pay their property tax and get their new tag. And, um, and so anyway, there are various services that are available here in this facility, but it certainly goes beyond that with roads and bridges. So, One thing that hasn't been mentioned is 911. In case of emergency, we've got staff 24 hours a day that you can call 911 and get somebody on the other line and they can direct you to either the ambulance service or the <coughs> service department or what, whichever department that you're needing that service. And like I say, even the ambulance service, 24 hours a day that people are stationed at the, at the uh, EMS building at night so that they're ready to go. And like I say, those kind of 24 hour services means we got three crews in order to cover that. So that's those two departments uh, require a lot of uh, personnel and also the sheriff's department. And so it's, uh, like I say, those, those type of services that are available today, 24 hours a day, that in my younger days, we didn't have those kind of services. And so you kind of learn to appreciate those now because, uh, like I say, it's uh, when you Need, need help, you hope that you can make a 911 call and, and get that help. So. so if your younger sister comes back here as part of her class, <laughs> if this is available, in number, you, you'll know all the answers already, so, so uh, yeah. you're just a little bit ahead. So, uh, And the newspaper does, um, uh, Kathy's with the Abilene Reflector Chronicle, and so they'll put articles in the paper about what we discussed so people are aware of what's going on. And there is also a live stream, so, uh, so that's available as far as on the internet. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to our 
uh, county uh, counselor, Doug Thompson. Do you have anything to report uh, I to need us? 15 minutes of executive session, attorney client privilege and information would include the board and uh, Brad and, of course, myself, 15 minutes at the end. Okay. Don't have anything other than that. Thank you. And when he gives us that information, there's some things just because of the privacy nature that we don't discuss to in front of the public. And sometimes if it involves land acquisitions or personnel issues or um, a few things like that. And um, so our counselor provides us with that information just so we kind of have an idea of something that may be headed our way that we need to give some uh, consideration to. Okay, uh, Brad, if you'll give us your report, please. And Brad is our county administrator. Okay, uh, last week we had received a call for help from Rock Springs Ranch. And uh, if you're not aware of it, this is 4-H week and Camp Week mm -hmm. at Rock Springs Ranch. There's about, well, from what I've been told, 4 million or so kids at <laughs> Rock Springs Ranch. <laughs> But uh, they were trying to get their pool filled and didn't have access to enough water quick enough. So long story short, uh, Martin had one of his uh, staff members use our transport and we hauled about 30 to 40,000 gallons of what I'm sure was very cold water from Woodbine to the swimming pool at Rock Springs to get them started on that. Uh, I think they needed about 200,000 and they planned on uh, having that done by the first of the week. I know we hauled Friday and a little bit Saturday. And uh, and they fed our guy very well while he was down there, and, and I think he made about 10 trips back and forth. But mm -hmm. that helped them out substantially. We did bill them just for the uh, the time for the person, and, it, uh, and the overtime it was about $725. We are say more than happy to, to pay for it to get them going. But they had some repairs that they needed to make on the pool, and they didn't get them done soon enough. But didn't have the water accessibility there with their system to be able to get it filled, and they figured it was pretty important to those kids to have a swimming pool to operate out of. So if you see any little blue kids wearing 4-H <laughs> gear, then you know they were in that cold water this week. So. Uh, drainage issues and calls have been very prevalent the last two weeks. Uh, John and Martin, I don't know how many they've had, but after the heavy rains we had, uh, early uh, this this spring uh, seem to, as John says, when it's dry there are no drainage issues, when it's wet there's drainage issues. So I don't know how many they've had, but there's been a lot of citizens calls and, and township calls coming in for assistance where they've been out in the system and giving advice. And uh, a couple of them were, act, we've actually arranged that, I think I told you two weeks ago, one on 2600 Avenue that we're going to work with Willowdale Township to help get a couple an older structure replaced with a couple tubes, uh, and they're going to exchange that, do an exchange with us on some work for us, to, but we'll be able to help them get it done a little bit quicker. So, uh, the mastic sealing process started earlier this week. I don't need to get an email, but uh, they did start at uh, the county line, Clay County line on Ring Road. Are moving south. Uh, John and Martin have been out yesterday and looked at that, and I talked to John briefly last night before he headed home when he got back, and he said it looks very good. They're doing it just a little bit different. They've refined their process. They put down a, a, a fog seal first now, which is almost like a, a, a layer of tack oil, and then they come back and put the two layers of the mastic sealant on top of that. Uh, so should be getting about three to four miles a day as they go. Uh, I'm not sure where they're at today, but I would guess they're probably down 18 or farther south. They weren't, yeah, they had their stage their stuff there at the township shed on. 2900 Avenue okay. and and just to comment there the, the people that live up that area they were I mean it's amazing I don't want to say complain but you know they had to wait for the pilot cars for the pilot and, yeah, yeah. and they yeah. thought it was an asphalt overlay project yeah so. So, I mean you can never make everybody happy and that's true and it seems like sometimes we can't make anybody happy so. uh, the overlay again uh, between uh, Abilene and Solomon we're hoping we'll get started next week uh, the APAC uh, crews are working over, I believe, at the Harrington Airport, and they came from Georgia City, they went to the airport, Harrington Airport, and Martin said they're supposed to be coming here next. So uh, we did mow out that area between Abilene and Solomon uh, the last couple of days, so it's mowed again for them to be able to get in and work. So 
We're hoping to see them, uh, see them in here pretty quick. Uh, we do have a meeting Tuesday uh, at uh, Junction City with the uh, Citizens of the Correctional Advisory Board and uh, Craig, I think, is going to attend that with me uh, as a commissioner. And uh, then, of course, I reported to you that I had a talk show yesterday at KBI. We'll be doing that every Wednesday morning at 8.30. You'll have the uh, Dickinson County Connection. And uh, so I'll go over for 30 minutes and have a conversation with John Anderson and take phone calls talk about the current happenings in the county. He did, I noticed uh, that Lynn had tossed uh, his, the KAC uh, notice over to Craig earlier. I will go ahead and get those RSVPs made. I believe we had already made room reservations early, so we got them in the conference center, but we'll get them made for the November, the November conference coming up. You do have the year-to-date staffing reports and the budget reports. Uh, in the budget report, I was pleasantly surprised to see sales taxes up. Uh, quite a bit. It's not as high as the highest month, which reflected the Christmas season, but it is back up to around ninety-eight thousand dollars on the special sales tax, which is about six to eight thousand higher than it was last month. So that's good. And for the entire year, it's up also. Yeah, it is overall. So we're doing we're doing good so far. So, uh, and that's about all I've got, I guess. So. Okay. Thank you. I'll go to. Uh, notices and communications, and we have received a, a few letters. Um, this is one from Business and Community Development from the Kansas Department of Commerce, and it's really just a certificate of completion uh, of the product uh, project that we had uh, at, with the Community Development Block Grant, and this is for over at. Um, at Navarre, and uh, I'll go ahead and put this here so we have it as a matter um, of record. It was something that we approved previously, but they're just letting us know that it's completely official. Um, there's an investment group that had sent a letter or a, a pamphlet to us. Um, and this just has it's a market report on municipal bonds. Government Technology Magazine that we've received, and also the Governing Magazine, so those are available for review. I believe that's all we have. Is there any other, I've got one more here, is there any other uh, <coughs> items that any of you have received? Uh, just, the, the, we'll be meeting at Abilene, and I was thought it was hope, but I guess we're going to hope that to, <coughs> okay. to tour. And I'm just emailing her to see if it's still on its plan and told her you and I would be attending. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. But do you know where here in Abilene we... It didn't say that, Lynn, yeah. Okay. okay. Just get a sign. Yeah, we need to sign these, so... Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> um, the next item we have is to... Uh, Consider a resolution to declare some items surplus. Brad, if you would advise us on that and update us. <coughs> yes, this is a, an administrative resolution to declare a 2003 Ford ambulance, which is the ambulance we just retired or replaced as surplus, <coughs> Excuse me, as well as two uh, pickup beds that were removed from the two new trucks that we got. Uh, we had flat beds installed on those uh, to make them more user applicable for the road and bridge department. So <coughs> and since those bids are brand new, we, we, there should be some value to them when we need them, so we'll go ahead and put them on Purple Wave. Okay, so Purple Wave is a kind of an auction type service that's over in Manhattan. And what they do is they'll take uh, equipment and various things, um, basically have an online auction uh, people from all over the state or even out of the state can take a look at, at those items and um, often on some things uh, it's actually sold for more than what we anticipated the value would be. So it is a good way of having market value um, but basically it's for things that we 
no longer uh, need here in the county. Uh, uh, Brad, were those pickups, were they new when we bought them? Or? Yes. Could we purchase those without the bid? We could have, yes. We didn't anticipate having some issues that we had with them. One of the issues is being four wheel drive, they're too tall and our staff's too short. So. Okay. That's that's the sum of They couldn't get into the back of the trucks with that ladder, so by taking the bids off, uh, they can put a flat bed on and make yeah. it more user. If we had it to do again, we would purchase them without the bids. So. Right. Martin didn't anticipate the trucks being so tall. So. Well, all of these trucks now are tall. Yeah. Yeah, we, we either needed to do that or, or get some staff that's a little taller than one or two. So. Uh -huh. Okay, so this resolution number I'll move we adopt is 06-08-17. No, no, so that will be the motion that we adopt that resolution to declare these items surplus. Is there a second? Second. We have the motion and the second. Is there any further discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, we also have a proposal in other business, and this is to consider uh, custodial services, and this is something Brad gave us a report on, but if you'd quickly review that information, Brad. Yes, this is a proposal to provide custodial uh, and housekeeping uh, services for the courthouse, health department, extension office, and county attorney's office. Uh, we do have a task schedule that they provided with details in it. They will provide those services. Uh, the company's name is ICER, and they will provide those at a cost of uh, $65,496 per year, which would initiate July 1. Okay. And you had mentioned that they would uh, come in during the evening sometimes? They, they will do those cleaning services during the evening after hours when the offices are closed. Okay. And that's kind of helpful, I mean, because during the daytime when others are in here and the public's in here, uh, it's, it's probably good. a little bit more efficient if they can come in in the evenings. Okay. Any questions on this? Well, we had, like I say, during our work session, we went through all the <coughs> duties that they would be required to do, and, and like I say, uh, uh, I think I'll move that we uh, contract with, with that eye service to uh, do our custodial services here at the courthouse. Second. Okay, we have the motion of the second to go ahead and with eye serve professional cleaning. Uh, their annual, their monthly fee is $5,458, which would translate to $65,496 annually. And um, if there's no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The uh, other item that we have is to review and approve the interlocal agreement for the Flint Hills Public Transit. This is an interlocal agreement between Dickinson County, Riley County, and Part Watney County in relationship to the operation of Flint Hills Regional uh, Transit Authority. And uh, we have four copies, and I believe Doug had reviewed it already. And uh, so it requires approval and signature by uh, the chairman and then Doug. And uh, then those four copies will go out to the other counties and be Set to the Attorney General for approval as well. So. Okay. Is there a motion for so move. approval? I'll second it. We have the motion and second that we do enter this interlocal agreement uh, with the Flint Hills Transit District. And this is just kind of a cooperative effort with some adjoining counties in this district. Um, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The only item we have remaining before adjournment is a 15-minute executive session. And Doug, what did you say the purpose of this was? Attorney-client privileged information. Okay. So this would be for attorney-client privilege information. Uh, would include um, 
course, our counselor, Doug Thompson, our administrator, and the three county commissioners. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that we will start the 15 minutes at 11.33, and that would be my motion. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And the reason I set it for 11.33, it gives a chance for people to clear the area, but on the two students, you have a paper for us to sign. And we'll sign it now rather than have you come back in 15 minutes for that. And then you'd be excused to take your mom out for lunch or something else. But, but anyway, thank you for being here. And if you'll bring that paper forward, we'll sign it now. Did, did you say on the our Casey conference you did send all three of us our names in for the conference? Or well, you wrote this in a very really nice, organized <laughs> way. So. Thank you. Good luck to you. Thank yeah. you for being here. Thank being you very much. Uh, and you did a nice yeah. job. Thank yes, you. you did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we've already, I think the day that uh, we can do the reservations, we were online like immediately and try to get room to the conference right. center. But, uh, I'll confirm that. Yeah, I don't, when's I, the last day we can decide not to go? Yeah, we'll make the I'll make a motion that we return to regular session. It is 1148. Okay, thank you. I'll second it. We have the motion and the second to return to regular session at 1148. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, it's just been informational attorney-client privilege and there's no Action to be taken today on any other items. I'll move we adjourn. Second. And the motion is second for adjournment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned. <laughs>